What's up and welcome to the DualSense podcast for episode 149. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jason, and I'm joined, as always, of course, by your other co-host who says that his name tonight is also Jason, but we know that's not true. His name is Travis, of course. Travis, what's what's good tonight? It literally says also Jason, so I just want to make sure everybody yeah. knows is literally also Jason. <laughs> Real original. Big, hey, it's a big weekend for us. It's glizzy season. Oh, it is glizzy season officially, yes. i got to forget the Memorial Day. It's in memoriam of glizzies, of course, not veterans. <laughs> Correct, not yeah. War. All of our fallen hot dogs. And do bratwurst count as glizzies, or is hot dogs just... Uh, I don't yeah, know. I, I, you know, I would say let's throw it all in there. Why not? Mm-hmm. I mean, Glizzy started off as a, a slang for a gun, and somehow it's turned into hot dogs, which is very strange. <laughs> it's 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 weird how the internet works. And speaking of the internet, we're going to have a lot to say, or at least I'm going to have a lot to say about, about the, the internet. In, about the internet. Uh-huh, <laughs> okay. Here, here right. momentarily. Yeah. 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 So, well, uh, I'm trying to think what what's what's going on with me. Uh, Tried to go to dinner tonight at a hibachi joint here in town, and it's a that's about like a it's like a twenty by forty room. It's got like about six tables in it. It was jam packed, so I turned around and left. Just opted for the Chick Fil A instead, which was fine. I you know, I'm in that I'm I don't know like I don't know what's going on with me lately, but like nothing sounds good to eat. Mm-hmm. You know I don't know, and and think, that which yeah. is which is odd for me because I love food. You know you're just a curmudgeon, maybe. <laughs> I just hate everything except PlayStation showcases, apparently, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, Travis, we are a weekly podcast where you and I get together and we discuss all things PlayStation like news, rumors, new game releases, and much more. We do it all in under 90 minutes and we post new episodes every Monday on all of the usual podcast services around this hateful, dying world cynical world and we also share new episodes on youtube if you prefer to listen there which many of you do apparently which is wonderful so if you have discovered us through youtube and their new podcasting feature then welcome aboard we're glad to have you but we also share gameplay videos on youtube i think i've shared a couple this week but i don't remember what they are oh i think (laughs) (laughs) i think some insurgency sandstorm perhaps and something else anyway it doesn't matter you can also find us on social media. Our primary communica- communication app is Twitter, where we go by at the DualSense Pod. But we're also on Instagram and Facebook. We have a website. It's called the DualSensePodcast.wordpress.com. So please find us, hit us up, chat PlayStation with us. And I think a few of you are going to want to tell me how wrong that I am after this show, but we'll see. Maybe not. So uh, anyway, without any further ado here Travis we've got to jump into the news straight away because it is a big big news week massive lots to talk about lots to cover if we can do it all in 90 minutes it'll be a miracle but we'll figure it out somehow some way so here we go starting with number one after nearly two years since the last PlayStation showcase Sony finally held a new event on Wednesday and it left most of the fan base and internet wanting more much more, apparently. Here's a recap of everything that we saw. I figured we could, you know, run down through these, and if anything jumps out at you, then feel free to jump in here with me. I'll have some comments as well along the way. The show kicked off with one of PlayStation's newest internal teams as Haven Studios revealed their competitive heist shooter called Fair Games, with a dollar sign, where you team up with and fight other players to break into exotic locations and steal loot and money from billionaires. It was a CGI trailer with no release date, and interested players can sign up for early access tests now by going to the website takethere.money. And uh, I am signed up, of course. I I thought this was actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I know it's... Let me back up. There's no gameplay, so we don't have... It's not like we know necessarily how the game plays, but I think the premise is cool. The art direction is cool. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of the heist shooter and it's apparently having a moment cause there's so many heist shooters out and, and coming out, um, in the, in the near future. But, uh, I was, I was about this. A lot of people weren't, you know, I don't get it necessarily. If, if live service isn't for you, that's fine. But 
Um, I think there's there's nothing wrong with this in my opinion. I, you know, some people were hating on the the dollar sign in the name, and yeah, maybe that's a little corny. I I can kind of understand that, but if the game didn't have the dollar sign, I think it would take a little bit of character away from it. So, you know, I understand why they have it in there. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks interesting. I mean, we've talked about how much that CGI trailers don't do anything for me because it's like a sure. big deal. But um, yeah, the, sure. the the premise is cool. I like the idea. Heist games are fun. Um, you know, it's just a variation yeah. of a shooter, really. But, you know, it's just fun. It's It's a good time. So why not try the access beta? Or alpha, mm-hmm. whatever they want to call it. Why not? Why not go for it? Yeah. Don't understand the hate on the dollar sign at all. Like, yeah, it's, just, it's different. Just worry about something important. Is kind of how I feel about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? They're having fun with it, so let them <laughs> let them have a good time. It's got like a Robin Hood vibe going on, like a rob from the rich, you know, give to the poor right, type right. of thing. And and I saw some articles, including on I think Push Square, that were talking about like, wow, this is really tone deaf, especially at a time where we're in like a financial crisis and this and that. It's like guys. It's a fucking it's, video game. It's a fucking video game. Like hey, how many times? Six minute mark. Fresh cuss word. Good job. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, you're right. Oh yeah, we made it. No, you're <laughs> we right. Made we made it past five. <laughs> yeah, we're good. That's right. YouTube SEO. Get out of here. Yeah. So, <laughs> almost forgot. But it's a it's a game. It's a video game. Like, it's not. They're not trying to make a political statement per se. They're just they're just making a game. Also. It's a fun idea. Like they're having fun with yeah. the game. Are, well, are we going to be ma- are we going to be mad about gangs of Sherwood and Payday Three and all these other games? Like they're yeah. stealing from people from institutions and stuff. Like no, nobody's going to write those articles. Like get out of here. Like anyway, I don't want to get too political right off the bat. So I just thought that's so, like reaching. Like I thought that was dogpiling, in my opinion, on on PlayStation after after I saw that this week. But anyway, Fair Games looks pretty cool. No release date. Potentially 2024 if they're already taking signups for like beta or alpha tests or something like that. So we'll see. Also worth noting that they began the showcase with a live service game. So they're definitely going very heavy into that realm, which we'll talk about more later as well. So after that, we got Arrowhead Game Studios, who finally revealed one of the worst kept secrets in Hell in Helldivers 2. It was confirmed to be a third person co-op shooter coming to PS5 and PC this year. And we did get to see quite a bit of gameplay with some very cool explosions in the trailer. And I am all about this. No, totally in. It'll be fun. I'll get it day one. Yeah. I'm sure our crew will get it day one, assuming they actually show up online. So yeah. it'll be a good time. <laughs> um, just real yeah. quick, speaking of 2016 and heist games, and then oh, I, I just put these two together when you said that. Do you remember what year we played? And just to humble brag, what year we played in, in Platinum? Operation Tango. What year we played in Platinum? That wasn't a PS5 launch game, was it? I don't. I couldn't tell you that. I don't know. I think it, I think it was. Wasn't it, it? Was it was exactly two years ago, which is unbelievable to me. Today, two years ago today, we did it in June. Holy shit! So, of twenty one. Okay. That's crazy to me. It's been that, that long. Was. It doesn't okay. feel like it at all. Yeah, and that's a heist game. That was a dope game. That's yeah, a, that's an awesome game. But uh, anyway, yeah. Helldivers 2, one of my favorite announcements and uh, reveals of the show. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't wait for this. God, it looks cool. It looks really cool. I agree. I don't know if they've uploaded a trailer, like a 4K version, but I need to look mm-hmm. at that because I would love to see that. But uh, no release date other than this year. It feels to me like a July or August release, I think. So we'll see. We'll see. So two live service games right off the bat there. After that, we saw EA and new developer Ascendant Studios shared a new gameplay trailer for their first-person magic shooter called Immortals of Avium. It's releasing July 20th. It looks very cool. Very, very cool. I don't know. For some reason, the magic part just isn't exciting for me. Oh, you'd rather do shooty-shoot, bang-bang. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I guess maybe it involves less thinking as opposed to what powers I need to use. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, fair enough. I'm I'm in on this. This is uh this is something different, a little bit different. I like it. So after that, five oh five games and developer one more level revealed fast paced first person shooter Ghost Runner two with a gameplay trailer. It's coming to PC and consoles later this year, and that doesn't really do anything for me. I dabbled <laughs> dabbled in the first one and it's it's fine. It's kinda hard. Then we saw fast paced, hardcore looking action RPG Phantom Blade Zero which was announced from a new developer called Cruel Man Studio. 
and we got to see a lot of gameplay actually, but no release date. It will come to PS5, and we learned after the show that it will feature an open world and multiplayer elements. And it looks oh, it looks cool, but it looks similar to a lot of like these like Sekiro, like Dark Souls, right games and th- and things like that. So like it's like Soulsborne games and high shooters is like all we get nowadays. I mean, somebody will like it. Like I can see how that game would be oh, yeah. cool to a lot of people, but no, yeah, like cool. you said, we're getting the same. We're getting a lot of repeats. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe we should be excited about a FPS shooter that uses magic. Yeah, uh, touche, touche. But uh, no, it, it looks cool. It's just not for me. I don't think, but I get it. Then Giant Squid Studios, the developer of Abzu, revealed their new adventure game called Sword of the Sea. Sword of the Sea. It's coming to PS5, but it got no release date, and this looks absolutely wonderful. So I think the artist on Journey is also working on this game, and you can definitely see that it has Journey influences and looks kind of similar, but you're like skateboard, not skateboarding, you're like snowboarding across sand on a sword, which also is a weapon, and it looks very, very good. Oh, it's I can't a fever wait. dream. Yeah. yeah, it's a fever dream, all right. It is one of my other favorites from the show very excited about that yeah but like you never but had you heard of it before we went in no it's a new reveal right exactly so yeah and like that's that's the whole fun of the showcase to me is there's always shit that you never have heard of or expected obviously it's a reveal and mm-hmm. you see this never in a million years would you have expected a sword guy a sir guy surfing on a weapon sword on sand no so like <laughs> right this is kind of the fun of the whole thing i think that people get lost and they have these yeah. expectations or thoughts, which you can get into later, but like mm-hmm. something like this, I think is kind of what this is really about for me, at least is something fucking weird on the left field. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. So then we saw developer crow team, which I've never heard of, but obviously they're, they're well known because they announced puzzle adventure game, the Talos principle Two. So they announced a sequel to the Talos principle, which I have heard of It is coming later this year to PS five. And uh, it looks cool. It looks like it could be a VR game honestly, in my opinion. So we'll see. Uh, then Nomada or Nomad. I don't know how to say, it. I'm going to say Nomada, Nomada studio. Armada. The develop- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the developer behind the wonderful game called Greece or Gris. I don't know. I think it's Greece. <laughs> it. They revealed their next title. It's called it Neva, I think, or Neva. Or Neva. Yeah. We can't or, say or anything Neva. these guys make. Yeah. I wish they would just fucking tell us how to pronounce everything. Let's call it Neva. It's due out in 2024 and it looks amazing. And it's a it's it's high up there on my most anticipated mm-hmm. twenty twenty four games. I'll I loved Greece. It's in my personal top ten all time games. So I'm absolutely playing anything that these guys make. It looks great. Very artsy fartsy, as we would say. Then action adventure sequel Cat Quest, Pirates of the Caribbean, which yes. is a great name, was announced and we saw gameplay and it's coming in twenty twenty four and it looks pretty cool as well. It's like a it's like a, I don't know. It just looks looks neat. I, I was I was kind of feeling. It. I didn't expect. I was like, what the fuck? Am I a pirate I, I, cat? I, yeah, you're a pirate cat. Correct. You're a pirate it's, of the Caribbean, actually. And it's not like the stray cat finally got a job or something like that. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. It's it's uh it's kind of like an isometric, like almost top down looking type of thing. Looks cool. Mm-hmm. She'll look it up. It might be for you. So then Square Enix showed up, and we're seeing a theme here because lots of Sony's big partners publishing partners were at the showcase so square enix showed up they revealed a third person team-based shooter as a straight-up knockoff of nintendo's splatoon and it's coming to ps4 and ps5 it's called foam stars by the way there was no release date given but the fact that it's a ps4 game makes me think it's coming later this year mm-hmm. and uh, i thought even this looked really cool like i thought it looked fun I, yeah it looks fun it looks cool to me people were hating on it because it's a splatoon ripoff like we don't have one on playstation so what's the fucking problem <laughs> and <laughs> just give us a version of splatoon it's fine i mean maybe the name's a little corny i'll give it i'll give you that but like i think it looks cool it looks neat like hopefully it's good so it's, it's like it's 4v4 multiplayer like it's perfect and yeah, people just call it foam it doesn't really matter yeah so I don't know. I was feeling it. I thought thought it was cool, and and I've dabbled in Splatoon a little bit when I had a Nintendo Switch for like two point five seconds, and I like Splatoon, so I was like, okay, this is this is perfect. It's great. So I don't know. People were kind of hating on it, but I think it's cool. Hopefully, it's this year. Could uh, I could go for that? So then, storybook action adventure game, The Plucky Squire, revealed a new gameplay trailer and announced that it is releasing this year on PS Five, and this looks so fucking dope. This is this is incredible. Like, I don't know if you watched the trailer for this or not, but you mm-hmm. like 
but it's like this like 2D side scrolling, like you're scrolling through like a comic book, but then you like come out of the pages and you're in a 3D world. So you like go back and forth between like 2D and 3D, which is really dope. And it's got a really cool art style. So <clears throat> I've seen a trailer for this before at something else. I don't remember what, but this is uh, really fucking dope. And I'm excited about this a lot. And people actually were pretty high on this. There was no haters that I could see for this one. So that was good. Next up was Voxel Art Heist Demolition Game Teardown, which showed off gameplay and announced that it's coming this year to PS5. It's like Minecraft, but destroying everything. And uh, I think it looks really cool. Yeah, I've seen people play it on like Steam. Yeah, I think it's on PC already. Yeah, it looks looks awesome. It's like a sandbox. Like Mm -hmm. if you want to break into something, you can drive like a, truck off of a bridge and smash it into the side of a building and like go in and steal the shit like well, great sign me up I'm, yeah, I'm there like, you like explosives and you can like build different ways and connect things and use cranes yeah. and like literally sandbox yes correct looks cool I wonder if it has multiplayer I, that I don't know but uh, that'd be fun if it did after that we got a big one the long rumored Metal Gear Solid 3 remake was announced with a cinematic trailer it's actually called a Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, and it is coming to PS5 at some point in the future. And there was reporting today from IGN who said that it's coming in 2024, which doesn't surprise me necessarily. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks very great. They did some side-by-side like screenshots afterwards, and uh, definitely a huge jump from PS2. So definitely will check that out. Elsewhere in Metal Gear Land, Konami announced the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1, which is coming to PS5 this fall and includes the original Metal Gear games, as well as Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3. The last two are the same versions that were included in the HD collection years ago, so this is kind of a question mark for me. Like I get getting them on PS5, but it's literally versions that we've already had elsewhere before. And that's, I mean, maybe there's more to it than that, of course. There could be. But it's coming out this fall, and I feel like this is like a $70, you know, anthology of games, and there's no upgrades to them, is what it feels like to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like 30 bucks, but I'd, I highly doubt that. And it feels like we're going to get a $70 collection with no upgrades, which I think is a, is a major L. After that, open world a building adventure game at Towers of... Ashaba, Ashashba, Ashagba, I don't know how you say it. It was revealed from developer Dreamlit Games, and it showed off gameplay, and it's coming in 2024. And, uh, you know, it didn't do much for me, quite honestly. And, of course, we got a token gameplay trailer for Final Fantasy 16. after that. Got a new look at gameplay. It's coming out in just a few weeks here, but uh, nothing much more to say about that. It does look good. Looks great. Looks very good, just not for me. We then got a gameplay reveal for survival horror game Alan Wake 2, which announced that it'll be releasing October the 17th for PS5, and they claim that it's going to be the year's best-looking video game, Remedy Entertainment does. So, gotta say, it looks pretty good. Looks scary. I mean, it looks looks scary as hell. I don't understand why they're saying that. Like, I I guess they're very proud of it, but it's just very... You still hear people say stuff like that true yeah you're right i mean they are definitely proud of it jesus christ you know i don't yeah it does look scary though but jesus prettiest game ever good yeah well just just for this year they didn't say ever just for 2023 so they are gonna you know give them a calendar here that they're gonna claim that it looks the best but uh, after that ubisoft another playstation partner showed up to reveal the first gameplay for assassin's creed mirage which is launching october the 12th for fifty dollars, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought this looked wonderful. Yeah, pull me uh, back excited in. about this. It's a straight up classic Assassin's Creed game. It's like yeah. if you if they would have done a remake of the first game, this is probably what it would be. In my yeah, opinion. that's all I wanted. I, I found myself watching YouTube reels of the uh, pole. I'm going to call it the pole vaulting mechanism, but yeah, that's it. That's what they're calling it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was awesome. I just kept watching it. And I was like, that's fun. <laughs> like, it just it's just crazy to me. Yeah, I love it. I it's um I was surprised to see that there honestly at at the show. Um because you know Ubisoft is doing a show of their own, but you know, I'm sure PlayStation probably paid a little bit of money to get that in there, so anyway, after that, Benji announced a narrative-driven adventure game called Revenant Hill, 
and it looks very much like Night in the Woods, their other game, and it's coming to PS4 and PS5, and apparently you play as a witch's familiar in that game. So What's a familiar? It's like their little, like totem or like little creature like the that they control or whatever morph into or whatever like a frog or, or a crow or whatever i don't know how it works man i'm not a witch <laughs> <laughs> oh that made me laugh really okay i made myself <laughs> laugh welcome to the welcome to the dual sense podcast all right night in the woods is apparently very good i, I don't know not for me after that we saw action rpg grand blue fantasy relink they showed a new gameplay trailer and it's coming to PS4 and PS5 this winter. And uh, not for me, but it's for someone. <laughs> Grand, Grand Blue is uh, very well regarded. It's just not my cup of tea. So I hope if you were looking for that, that uh, you enjoyed it. After that, Street Fighter VI showed a new trailer focused on world tour mode and the single player campaign. And it is, of course, launching on June the 2nd. Uh, nothing to really say about that. Then we saw a psychedelic side-scrolling action game, Ultros. It was revealed for the first time, and it's scheduled to release in 2024. It's a PS4 and PS5 console exclusive, which uh, and it looked very cool. It was uh, very colorful, very psychedelic, for lack of a better term, and um, I'm, I might be about it. It kind of looked like a Metroidvania, and if it's a Metroidvania, I'm not about it, but we'll see. Then we saw free-to-play open-world RPG Tower of Fantasy. They brought a gameplay trailer, and it's coming to PS4 and PS5 this summer, and uh, that's definitely not for me as well. That one, kind of blah, honestly. Uh, Looked like a lot of other games that we've had uh, already. So, Capcom, another publishing partner of PlayStation, showed up too, and they showed the first trailer for Dragon's Dogma 2, and it was a full, and it was full of gameplay, excuse me. It is coming to PS5, but no release date was given. It looks, it looked awesome. Single player game, no co op, which I think the first one was the same way. I'm not for sure, but it looks great. Uh, yeah, definitely going to keep my eye on that one. I think that was a pretty big reveal for PlayStation to have there, a big get for them. So that was a nice one. Then we got another token reveal. It seems like Five Nights at Freddy's is at every PlayStation thing, like State of Play and everything. So Five Nights at Freddy's revealed a new game called Help Wanted 2. And it showed up with a new trailer, and it's coming out later this year for PSVR 2, apparently. So definitely won't be playing that. Capcom came right back, and they showed off a gameplay trailer for Resident Evil 4, the VR mm-hmm. mode, which is coming to PSVR 2, and it's apparently uh, the full game is playable front yep. to back in, in VR. So uh, also way too scary, but very yep, cool. Yeah, not playing that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. After that, zombie first-person shooter sequel Arizona Sunshine 2 was announced, and it's releasing this year on PSVR 2, and it was i pretty sure it was a CGI trailer, but it looked pretty cool. Right. I think it the seems more was, doable than the last than yeah, the, the yeah. Resident Evil, for sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm going to keep an eye on that one. We then saw Smilegate, who shared a new gameplay trailer for their military single-player first-person shooter Crossfire Sierra Squad which it still says is coming this summer for PSVR 2. I think that game is going to have co-op as well. So I'm really interested in that, but I just, mm-hmm. I've just i discovered I can't do these like free-moving first-person shooters in VR. Like mm-hmm. if they're on rails or if I can do like the teleporting thing where I can, like different. The, if I can point the stick and move, like, yeah, I can do it. But if it's where I'm just like having to move all over the place, like my brain can't handle it and I want to throw up. I feel like I would start wanting to run. Yeah, exactly. They, they can, have you seen these things you can buy? And it's, it looks like a mini like trampoline thing. Yeah. You strap yourself yeah. to it and you yeah. play VR with it. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like $1,000 or some shit. Nah, not that cool. Buy it for me. Mm-mm. After that, In Dreams announced that their trippy John Wick-esque shooter Synapse is launching July 4th for PSVR 2 and features the voice of Metal Gear Solid's David Hayter, the iconic voice, of course, of Snake. And uh, this game looks very cool too, but it's same same question that I have about Crossfire is, is it a free moving shooter or is it on rails? It looks to me like there's a possibility that it could be an on rail shooter. And if that's the case, I'm there. I'm all the way there, but I'm not, I'm not convinced. It might be free moving, might be vomiting. And then we got our first and only shadow drop of the night after that. Beat Saber 2 brought a new trailer and shadow dropped for PSVR 2. 
along with a new Queen and Music Pack. And it's available now for $30 or as a free upgrade for owners of the PS, uh, PS4 version, excuse me, and, or PSVR, I guess I should say. I don't, I don't really understand how you could have a second VR Beat Saber game. How could there be a Beat Saber 2? I feel like you just add songs to Beat Saber 1 forever. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I uh, get it. Yeah. I don't know. It's a good question. After that, it was Bungie time, Travis, and they started by revealing their brand new game. It's a sci fi PvP extraction shooter called Marathon, which showed a cinematic trailer that was wonderful. They also shared a trailer for Destiny 2's final DLC called The Final Shape, which was just a cinematic. But uh, Marathon has been the most viewed trailer out of all the trailers from the PlayStation Showcase. It's at like 13, 14 million views Mm -hmm. currently, ahead of Spider-Man by one or two million. And it was only CGI. This game is also coming to Xbox and PC when it launches, presumably next year. Although I watched a development documentary that they put out after the showcase and in that they said that they are about to go into alpha which in my mind means that this is a late 2024 game at the earliest they also said that the next time that we saw them they would show us gameplay and it would be much closer to the game's release which i appreciate so did you see the marathon trailer yeah i mean i was surprised i'm yes i'm surprised that it's has more views than spider-man but I think mm-hmm. it's the most, I, I guess, the most excited game I'm, I have. To okay. me, like, okay, I, I, I love, I really enjoy Destiny for even for what it was and wasn't in and out yeah. of the crucible or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I think they've kind of earned uh, the idea of it. It just makes me excited, so I'm ready to try something from them that isn't Destiny. So I enjoy that because I know that. I mean, honestly, what are we going to get after a marathon? Probably Destiny Three. So might as well enjoy it. I, I don't know. I just yeah, something about it was exciting to me yeah. um, more than the rest. Yeah, it looks great. The art direction was very cool, like block colors and shit. Um, I'm about that. The music choice was great. Great music in the trailer. Um, really conveyed what the game was in a very subtle way, I thought. It was very masterfully done. And obviously, I'm not in the minority on that. 14, I mean, millions of people enjoyed it too. So that is definitely one of my most anticipated games now. I can't wait to find out more about that. So after we got the Bungie Deluge, we then saw newly acquired first-party studio Firewalk. They announced their new PvP multiplayer first-person shooter called Concord, or Congard, as some might say up north, with a cinematic trailer. All we know at this point is that it's set in a quote-unquote vibrant sci-fi universe, and it is launching in 2024 for both PS5 and PC. And uh, it was a neat little CGI trailer it showed like a gun and a, and a walkers and a spaceship. It kind of, right. I guess, set the, set the tone a little bit. No, I watched that and I was like, I, I, you didn't tell me anything is what I felt like. Yeah, I mean, of course, for sure. It's, it was just <laughs> annoying. I, I don't know. I don't know what I expect. Like, yeah, like I, I know that I don't like CGI trailers, but that's basically what we got for Marathon. And I was like, OK, this is dope. Like, right. M- I guess because they, they conveyed what I was getting. Yeah. And I knew no. I know what I'm getting into. Like with Concord, I don't I don't I can assume, but like it's Firewalk. Mm-hmm. So I don't have I don't really yeah, have don't. a reference point in or at least I don't because I don't think I've have I even played one of their games. I don't I don't think they've made a I game. I think they're brand new, if I remember correctly. Right. So it's like Bungie already Bungie can mm-hmm. do less and convey more, I think, because we know what they have. But if you don't know what you if you're new, give me something to like I saw a locker and a gun. It's like, all right. <laughs> like mm-hmm. give yeah. me something yeah no i think you i think you're absolutely right i totally get that you know firewalk's not a known quantity so there's nothing that we can really pull from to understand where they're coming from so i totally agree with you and get that so just prior travis to the final announcement our boy jim ryan came on to announce the leaked project q handheld device that will be for ps5 remote play only he confirmed that it will include the reported one or a 1080p excuse me 60 frames per second eight inch lcd screen and it literally looks like they cut a dual sense in half and slapped a screen in between it and uh after the show insider tom henderson said the q is launching this november and it will have a three to four hour battery life jim also announced the playstation branded earbuds which actually looked pretty cool but i'm just not convinced that 
earbuds can be, have good sound quality. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm I'm out of, I'm, yeah, go ahead. Go. I was just gonna say uh, the jury. I, like, I'm very interested in the Q. Okay, but the jury is out for me still in a way because the price has to be right. I still, I, I've said it on the show. I think this is a two hundred and fifty dollar accessory, and for that price, that's a tough sell for me probably. Um, I say that and watch me just go buy one anyway. But my, I think the more I think about it, though, I don't know like when or how often I would use it. Like, part of me can see like laying in bed for a little bit or like sitting on the couch and like playing. But then like, couldn't I just walk into the man cave and play? Like, I don't know. So, anyway, what did you think about any of this? Well, I thought the most interesting part of that announcement was the earbuds. Like, that's way more interesting to me than the Q Light because, like you said, what's the quality? What's the price point on those? I think those could be really good if you had decent quality. I wouldn't mind using the earbuds for like, you know, if I'm playing FIFA or something like yeah, something that I don't really need 3d audio for, you know what I mean? Like I definitely wouldn't play like battlefield with them on. Right. But the Q light is interesting. I, I, I was thinking about that too. What would I play it with? Um, I mm-hmm. don't, I wouldn't buy it for two fifty. I'm not sure if I'd buy it at one fifty. Honestly, I, I don't know what the price point would be for me. I don't know what I would use it for. Three to four hours seems low, but I understand what mm. it is. That's probably maximizing everything they can get out of it. I'm not that stupid, but like, what would I play on it? Honestly, like, I could right. dig around on FIFA or something. Like, I'm not going to yeah. play an FPS on it. I'm not going to play. I don't even really want to play a story-driven game on it because I want the whole experience. I want the. I want my TV. Mm. I want all of that. So it would be something that I was playing passively, and right, you know. And how often am I doing that? I don't know. Yeah, those are all valid questions. And um, I totally get that. So we'll see. Another kind of like minor or creeping concern that I'm worrying about is like, is it going to work? Like, is PlayStation going to improve their remote play technology at all? Right. So it kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, to where we can. I mean, it works fine for certain games, but like you were saying, like FPSs, competitive FPSs, any competitive multiplayer game, actually, like, you can't play remote play and do that. So are they going to do something where they improve their technology on their end potentially to where it's, you know, this is more feasible. I don't know. I don't even know if they can do that. I don't know if there's anything they, that they can do if it's literally just reliant on your own internet connection. So I don't know. We'll see. And then Travis, the show concluded with the big one that everyone had been waiting for. We saw 10 plus minutes of gameplay from Marvel Spider-Man two, which bizarrely, still did not reveal its release date, opting to remain with the vague fall 2023 window. Insomniac Games said after the show that a release date and pre-order details are, quote-unquote, coming soon. And uh, that is all for the showcase. It was about 75 minutes or so, just game after game after game, with the exception of two short Jim Ryan little spills in there. You know, I don't know. I know you didn't watch the show, but you you now know what was there. Do you do you generally have any thoughts about the show itself? My biggest pet peeve was, and it's kind of a contradiction, but my biggest pet peeve was the lack of like release dates. Like I like having concrete, expected mm. things. Like I don't like soon in the future mm. in the fall. Like I hate that. But also, like we've yeah. talked about, there's been a billion delays. So I understand why they're not giving us dates specifically because we also hate it when they delay everything. So can't have it both ways so i guess it's better to have a vague reference than to get disappointed altogether i guess Mm -hmm. but that being said like i'm not i'm not fully i'm not upset with it at all like the most surprising thing to me was that spider-man went last instead of first okay that that was the most surprising thing to me like i would have thought it would have went first because it's everybody's waiting for that and it's we all know it's coming this year yeah I expected to get something about the the handheld, which we got. I was disappointed mm-hmm. that it's remote play only. Like when I when I say I want a PlayStation handheld, I want like a console handheld, basically, of lack of a better term. So that's right. a little frustrating. Um, the earbuds were a nice surprise. I thought we had a lot of you know PlayStation. We want them to have their own FPS, and we seem to get multiple yeah. options. Hopefully, one of those will stick. We got some VR2 stuff, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, the zombie stuff looked cool. If you're into scary stuff, it seems like VR is really the place for it, honestly. like, yeah. Which makes sense. Like, I think they really capitalized on that market, or they're trying to capitalize on that market. Um, I thought mm-hmm. Alan Wake was a pretty big thing to get. 
I thought the Metal Gear stuff was really interesting and cool, even though the second part of that is kind of stupid. But the first part was really exciting for me, even though I haven't played them yet, because now mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, like I told you last week, like I think I'll end up playing them once they're kind of redone and remade. Yeah. So again, I have a in the future release date, but I, this is something I have to look forward to. Uh, I've watched a lot of people play Teardown, so I think that'll be a lot of fun to play. Yeah. There's like, there's a lot of stuff on here that I think is really good. The Assassin's Creed stuff I was fucking stoked for. I don't yeah. know, man. Like, I just don't, I don't know what people expect. And I guess you, you've <laughs> obviously read more than I have. I thought the Splatoon knockoff looked fun. Yeah. Like, even though I'm a casual and I knew it was a, I knew it was a, a knockoff, I was still cool with it. So, I don't know. I mean, part of the issue might be that we had to wait so long to get a, to get, to get a showcase that maybe people yeah. built it up in their minds, right? You know, like, you yeah. know, if you've been a virgin for 30 years, you build it up in your head and then you come in 10 <laughs> seconds. It's not that great. So maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe that's oh, how they good. felt, but they're forgetting yeah. the other parts. Like they got to see boobs and that was fun. So like, you no. gotta like, oh, that's a, that's I actually a great analogy. I just, I, I think that in a weird way, you always tell me to temper my expectations and maybe the world needs to temper their expectations. Like, I don't know what else people expected. Like yeah, we it, weren't going to get a PlayStation five pro announcement they're not getting anything like that they're not going to walk out on the what do they wanted to walk out and be like we got call of duty for 20 years is that what they wanted like i I don't know what they expected right but yeah i mean if you look at the look at it in totality you got horror games you got fps games you've got side scrollers you've got something that looks like a metrovania game they got shit that like covers every single faction they got soulsborne knockoffs or whatever to call them like yeah, they had everything there in a sense, every kind of genre basically. So, mm-hmm. I, I don't really know what else you could expect. Like, like I said, me to me, lack of specific dates. That's what I wanted the most, and I didn't get it, and I can live with it. But that to me it was the only frustrating thing of the whole show. I get that. I think that that is a fair criticism. I think that we, of everything we saw at the show, I don't think we got a concrete release date for anything. Well, let me take the back. That's not true. Because we got Alan Wake and we got Assassin's Creed Mirage. We Those were two yeah. dates, but those might have been the only two uh, out of like 33 games shown. Um, I'm trying to look through the list here. Let's see. Yeah, I think that was it because that Immortals of Avian, Avium game already had a release date before the mm-hmm. showcase. So out of 33 games, two of them gave us a concrete release date. And that's not just a PlayStation Studios problem. That was literally every game from various publishers and developers so that's that has been a criticism of the show i get that but it wasn't just playstation that was gun shy it was almost everyone so and i think that we've done that to ourselves because <laughs> right. well, okay only, only, well, there was three so the synapse the, the synapse vr game said july 4th so three games out of 33 but you guys have to understand we've done that to ourselves these publishers and developers are scared to fucking death to put a date on anything they're scared to death. Think about this. All, and this is there's several examples of this. That Immortals of Avium game, Electronic Arts is publishing it. Mm-hmm. Electronic fucking arts. They announced it two months before it's going to release. I know it's a new IP, but they are so scared to death of backlash. They announced a triple A Unreal Engine five game two months before it's coming out. Okay. Almost mm-hmm. every one of these PSVR 2 games that are coming out are like releasing just out of nowhere one day or like they're announcing and then coming out the next week. And I, that those are just two examples. Like we've done this to ourselves by how yeah. much shit that we give developers. It's our fault. It's, I agree with you. And it's fine. Like we don't want broken shit. It's, it's, it's a catch-22. We don't want broken shit. But we also are scaring these guys to death and girls to death. They're not going to do it. You guys got to understand that. They're just not going to do it anymore. And I think that plays in to what else I have to say about the showcase. People are mad that there's only four PlayStation first-party studios there. And of those four, only one of them showed us gameplay, and that was Spider-Man and Insomniac. Mm -hmm. That is a fair point. It's a fair criticism, I think. I get that. I get wanting to have more PlayStation studios there. But we, again, have done this to ourselves. PlayStation, Xbox. None of these publishers are going to put themselves in a position now where they can 
show you a game, say it's coming X, and then it gets delayed and delayed and delayed. And we're going to talk about The Last of Us multiplayer here in a minute. And I think this is another good example of this. Like these, all these, all these publishers, to me, in my opinion, are so gun shy that this is why we're not seeing stuff until like the last several months of development, which is totally fine. Right. But then what, what that causes is everybody's like, where the fuck is Sony Santa Monica? Where the fuck <laughs> is Ghost of Tsushima 2? Where the fuck is this? Where the fuck is Ben? Like, and listen, I would have loved to see all those there too. And I understand too, the criticism about this being a showcase in the first one in 18 months. And it felt like a really extended state of play. I can see that. I'm not, I, I understand where they're coming from because there's indies and some other stuff like that. But I am also someone who, yes, I want the big shit. Okay. I want the big fucking bangers, blockbusters, but the smaller stuff has really grown on me. I really appreciate it. And you also, Colin from Sacred Symbols has been trying to tell us for months that we were going to see these live service games and we might not like the way it looks. People are hating on the fair games because it's a, they think it looks dumb. People are hating on uh, the the Concord thing because they didn't show anything and it's another PvP multiplayer. Like, we've been warned, okay? We knew this was coming. But we also know that single player games are still coming as well. But these games take four, five, six years to make. Who is re- who? Who is supposed to be ready right now? Is my question. <laughs> ben Ben Studio w- would have been the closest, but they got their project shit canned. They had to start over. Ghost of Tsushima Two just came out in twenty twenty. Yeah, okay, we're not so, getting that for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, it might come out next year, but they're releasing Rise of the Ronin next year, which makes me think it's not coming out next year. Why would they release games that are basically the same fucking game in the same year? So, if you guys think Ghost of Tsushima Two is coming out next year, better think again i'm just saying like i think we're getting a little bit impatient and i i get the whole well we haven't had a showcase in 18 months how long have i been bitching on the show about we need a showcase i'm right there with you guys but i just think that we're being a little harsh i think we need to slow our roll just a little bit just a tad because we know the games are coming like they have to make fucking games we know how many studios they have We know all of them are making games. We know what some of them are doing, even though they haven't said. It's just going to take time. The last thing that I wanted to say was, part of me thinks that Sony is pacing themselves, and we're going to talk about why here in just a second. Number two, any sort of postscript, which is PS, Travis, for the PlayStation Showcase, Tom Henderson and Notable Leaker, The Snitch, both claimed after the show that they had seen trailers for games which did not appear at the showcase, including for a AAA PC release that is coming in July, which is rumored to be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Along those lines, Naughty Dog released a statement on Friday that said that they have decided to take more time on the Last of Us multiplayer game, but also confirmed that they are working on a quote-unquote brand new single-player experience. Far more important, however, is a report from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, which came immediately after Naughty Dog released their statement. Schreier reported that the studio has, quote, significantly scaled down the team on its Last of Us multiplayer project, sources say, as it reassesses the game, end quote. Fellow journalist and insider Jeff Grubb added on Twitter, quote, all I've heard about this game is that it looks a lot like a studio's first live service game, and that Naughty Dog wanted to do things its way, which maybe didn't bode well for factions, end quote. Bloomberg's report added that the project has not been canceled, but many staff members have been moved to other projects. The changes were stirred up in part, they say, because a review by PlayStation subsidiary Bungie raised concerns over the game's ability to keep players engaged. Okay, so what do you think about the aftermath of the PlayStation showcase? I mean, I know that you, we, uh, you know, in the group text, you basically said you think it's dead, which I think is interesting for you to expound on, but. Like when I read, well, John, you know, the, John John said that. I think. Oh, John said but, that. Sorry, I have, I have an opinion. I have an opinion. Go ahead. But when I read about like you know Bungie raises concerns about you know the ability of the live service to keep a game, well, Bungie obviously knows what it takes with Destiny, right? So, sure, there's some there's some weight behind that. Um, the, the conspiracy me, you know, it's mm-hmm. just like, well, why would Bungie want there to be a competitive live service? Even though they're wrapped into PlayStation, why would they not just say it sucks, try to get it shit canned, and they can push their own? 
and then mm. Bungie's the only mm. thing they are doing live services. Um, you know, I don't. I, conspiracy me always finds something like that to think about. No, you're not the um, only one that said that. Yeah. What you know? What's this new brand new single player experience? So clearly they moved all of these people off to that. And yeah. You know the comment that Naughty Dog wants to do it its way, which I imagine to be 100 percent true, and that doesn't bode well for the live service game. I can see that too. So. Uh, why would Naughty Dog not want to do it their way? Like, all they do is make fucking bangers. So if it's not going to be other quality, just shit can the thing and move on. It's kind of how I feel. But, yeah, you know, I was thinking as you were reading through this, I was thinking, like, the success of the TV show for The Last of Us Part 1, like, they don't necessarily have to have factions mm-hmm. in a sense. Like, they could just be capitalizing on, on the momentum in the ether. But, like, they don't have to make a, another Last of Us if they don't want to. I mean, a lot of well-regarded shows or things or games are are limited, right? Like in Britain, they stop TV shows after three seasons or two seasons all the time. They don't just mm-hmm. keep making them until they're Assassin's Creed level saturated. That's more of an American thing. So, you know, if it's not going to be at their quality, I could see Naughty Dog pulling the plug on anything if it's not at their quality, regardless of, you know, what the market what the market cap says they can or can't do or what the ether would normally say in a marketing situation. Like, yeah, I'm not totally surprised by them scaling back, but yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm always going to think it's really hard for me not to think that Bungie has external motivations. It is odd. I mean, if we've got to assume this is true because Schreier is typically reliable. It's, it's odd that Sony would give Bungie so much power. Like off the bat, right? After they That's just got weird, them, right? Yeah, but it, it's a little weird to me. But it also, at the same time, is part of their charge, I guess, from them is to like, hey, it's part of the job, you, yeah, yeah. You like, you guys need to help us oversee like all of our live service games. So, I mean, I get that, but who is who is reviewing the reviewers? I guess mm-hmm. you know they have to. I'm sure that they're doing that, but I think that there has to be multiple levels there. And I'm not trying to necessarily defend Naughty Dog because, but the problem is that Naughty Dog is known for quality. I mean, that's, you know, they're, they they make prestigious AAA video games. Right. And then now all of a sudden we want to pretend like they can't do that. But on the other hand, this is a multiplayer live service game. They have, but they've made multiplayer games on a much smaller scale and, you know, with Uncharted and the first and last of us. So, I guess they really, it sounds like, are struggling with the live service parts of that, which I can understand, you know, the ongoing content and whatever. Right. So, big red flag for me. This is big news. Um, if we didn't have a showcase, this would obviously be the number one news story. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, it sounds like this game is either is going to die, not dead yet, but is going to die, or they've rebooted it, is the way it reads to me, that they're going to kind of start over Potentially, maybe not all the way, but maybe back up, go back to the drawing board. They didn't specify how much time or, I mean, Mm -hmm. a delay, because really the game's technically not been announced in any formal, like, official way, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to delay. There's no date on it. But sounds like it's definitely not coming this year after I 100% thought that it would come this year. That obviously is not happening. To me, I think that this happened recently in the last few months as a part of PlayStation's review process that we've been talking about with studios. And I think that this kind of fucked up their showcase a little bit. And I think this was supposed to be there. I think it was supposed to be there in a big way. I think that it was supposed to lead off the show and then end with Spider-Man or vice versa or vice versa to your point earlier. I think that it was, I literally think the showcase was going to be bookended by Spider-Man and The Last of Us multiplayer, both of which were supposed to come out this year. And I think this happened with the game, and I think it fucked up the showcase in a way, Mm -hmm. and I think it's not coming out this year. That's my opinion. That's how it reads to me. That's kind of what my gut is telling me. Yeah, it's kind of odd how they started anyway to me. Like, that was just an odd place to start. I Yeah, I would agree with that about the showcase. I I think that was kind of, you know, leading off with that Fair Games game was was a little odd. I get new IP, I get it, new IP, but I think in a perfect world, you open up with either Spider-Man or The Last of Us, and that like sets the tone. 
really for like what the fuck is going on here. So I think something happened there. I think something changed obviously with the showcase because of the last of us, in my opinion. And then, so just backing up for just a quick second and then we got to get going, but the showcase overall I meant to say this earlier was a good showcase. Like 75 minutes of fucking game after game after game, no ads, no horse shit. Yes. Not a whole lot of gameplay for some stuff. Yes, I understand not, you know, only four PlayStation Studios, but that's people were acting like it's one of the worst showcases they've ever seen. It's terrible and this and that. Like, there's no fucking way, guys. Like, I think we're being harsh. It's a, it was a good, not great showcase. It was perfectly fine. Okay. It's not a fucking two or three out of 10 that people were saying online. But anyway, so big news multiplayer, Last of Us game on the ropes significantly. I think that the uh, stuff that's being held back that Henderson alludes to is uh, Spider-Man and uh, potentially Death Stranding for Summer Game Fest. So we'll see. Number three, believe it or not, the PlayStation news dump did not end with the showcase. And it actually began the day before with Sony's latest investor relations presentation. And uh, this is a long one, so (laughs) I apologize. But there's a lot of interesting stuff here. So just sit back and relax. Grab a cuppa or a pint, perhaps, and uh, settle in here for a couple minutes. Let me let Daddy tell you a story about PlayStation's money. Here we go. In this new investor briefing for the money people, as it were, we learned a ton of interesting info about the PlayStation division. Let's start with PSVR 2. Sony says that it sold 8% higher than the original PSVR during its first six weeks on the market and was nearly at 600,000 units sold at the end of the last quarter meaning that it has likely crossed that threshold now that it has been available at retailers for a couple of weeks. If you recall, analytics firm IDC reported several weeks ago that PSVR 2 had only sold around 270,000 units in its first month on the market, a number which we now know was well wide of the mark. On the software front, they reiterated their push into live service gaming, with 60% of their game development budget by fiscal year 2025 being on games as a service and the remaining 40%, of course, on traditional single-player blockbusters. They also plan to release two or more quote-unquote major games every single year, covering every genre, they pointed out. The company revealed that they now have a system in place where all of its live service initiatives and games go through a full quote-unquote rigorous review process with Bungie, which we've already seen the fruits of. (laughs) It's a move that is part of PlayStation establishing its live service center for excellence. Sony also gave some insight as to why live service games are so important to them. Their internal forecasting and consultants forecast that add-on content in the gaming industry will be a $19 billion market in and of itself in 2026, up from $9 billion in 2021, billion with a B. Conversely, digital full game sales are projected to fall to $7.4 billion in 2026, down from $15 billion in 2021. So a a reverse trend there. PC games will remain a major front for Sony going forward with Marvel's Spider-Man selling 1.5 million copies, generating $52 million in revenue, and The Last of Us Part 1 selling nearly 400,000 copies while generating $15.5 million in revenue. But PC is not even the biggest push that Sony is making outside of PS5. That honor appears to belong to mobile gaming, which Sony says is growing faster than PC gaming at twice the speed and five times faster than traditional console gaming. To that end, PlayStation says that multiple internal teams are working on mobile games, fart noise, including the recently acquired Savage Game Studios. Diving deeper on the mobile angle for a moment, journalist Tom Warren relayed word that Jim Ryan said some very interesting things about cloud gaming on the presentation's live stream, with him saying, quote, The cloud will be fundamental to allow us to exploit that trend of mobility. We do have some fairly interesting and quite aggressive plans to accelerate our initiatives in the space of the cloud that will unfold over the coming months, end quote. The company forecasts that by April of 2025, 10 to 15% of its gaming output will be mobile titles, 35% PC, and 50% on PS5. From a PS Plus and PlayStation Store standpoint, things look extremely healthy for PlayStation. 30% of PlayStation Plus subscribers are at the extra or premium tiers which means 14.1 million people. And life to date, 
PS5 users are buying games at a 22% higher clip than PS4 users, 53% to 31%. In fact, the average amount of money PS5 owners have spent on the PlayStation Store life to date is $622, up from $479 on PS4 in the same time frame post-launch. PlayStation also projects PS5 to be ahead of PS4 on all key metrics by next April, including console user spend, full game unit sales, gameplay hours, monthly active users, and monthly active consoles, when their respective post-launch timelines are aligned, of course. And finally, to wrap up this monologue, and please forgive me, a couple of interesting notes buried in the footnotes of the presentation. PlayStation currently has a 46% share of the console market, they claim, and they plan to have a 50 plus percent share in the near future. Another interesting note buried even deeper is that first party studio Valkyrie Entertainment, traditionally a support team on other studios' projects, including God of War Ragnarok recently, appears to be developing its own game based off of a new IP. Game Rant reported earlier this year that they were hiring for a strategy game, which is interesting. Okay, so a little bit of diary of the mouth here. Uh, Anything you want to pull out of that? Any thread you want to tug at? I'm glad we all made it through that. <laughs> you know, when we talked about those PSVR2 numbers uh, a month ago or so, you know, we, we made the comment that, like, where is this dude getting the numbers from? How accurate are they? We don't really know because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we'd heard kind of conflicting reports, but this guy had written a whole piece about it. And, you know, now, now it really looks like he got some numbers that probably weren't correct, but you know wrote the story anyway and sometimes you see that in the media right you get you get a lead it might be right it might be wrong but yeah you kind of just go for it and you know wasn't the case for him didn't work out but clearly the psvr2 is doing better than the first one those numbers look much more in line with what i expected yeah higher revenue higher sales etc so that's about you know it's not anything too surprising there mm-hmm. as far as like the direction we've already seen you know, we've seen the Bungie thing, like you mentioned in the story. We've kind of seen that happen already. So mm-hmm. clearly there's a partnership there that PlayStation trusts them deeply already. So Apparently. that's very interesting. But hey, I mean, they've, they've kind of made their bed. So they'll go with it, I guess. Mm-hmm. What I thought was really interesting out of all these numbers and all of these things that we went through was the projection of like digital game sales to basically be cut in half in the next three years. Yeah. Yeah. Not su- not surprised that the live service post game buying shit will will oh, like double. Like um, yeah, I mean we have we talk about this all the time with like you know microtransactions and whatnot. Like of course that's going to go up, but full digital sale games to be cut in half makes me wonder how many releases we will actually get. It kind of makes me wonder mm-hmm. like these these companies are going to put out these live service games and then really not work on much. Like right. that'll be their focus. So they better get them right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i agree yeah the, the last thing i'll say about this is i know the mobile market is expanding and a lot of probably most of the gamers in the world play on mobile um but yeah, it's not correct. like we'll be seeing it'll be subsidiaries of playstation like we probably won't even know there's no way that the average mm-hmm. mobile users are going to know playstation is backing savage games they're just playing a savage game they have no idea what that even means they probably think all these people are little small studios that don't mean anything most of the people who play mobile games are old they probably look at you know like they turn on a movie and they see universal studios and the logo like they're used to seeing oh my god like five studios make all this shit (laughs) well they're, they're not really understanding that three studio or three companies own all of these studios so just because it says savage games doesn't mean it's not playstation but that's Mm -hmm. my i I think you'll see them make a lot of money off of it but it's not like they're technically focusing on it i think they're just going to get people who know what know how to do it and they'll still keep their focus on ps5 would be my guess yeah i think that's a fair observation as well and i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with mobile for a moment because i do have something to say about that i don't care about mobile you know but obviously to your point we've talked about on the show before like the the world video game market's like 80 percent mobile or something like that you know it's fucking astronomical how many people play games on their phone compared to console it's like a hundred million something console gamers you know to like billions of people who play games on mobile so you know if you don't try to get a piece of that pie you're you're an idiot 
pretty much probably in, in the business world, in the video game world. But sticking with mobile, Valkyrie Entertainment, hiring for a strategy game, I think they may be making a mobile game, actually. They are the team behind Guns Up Mobile. I think that that's a possibility that they're making a mobile game alongside Savage Game Studios as well, doing their thing. So uh, just a quick little note there, mobile. The other thing, a couple of big things I wanted to point out, like you said, PSVR 2 doing much better than these analysts thought it was doing. 600,000 units at this point, certainly. Uh, well on pace for their forecast of 1.5 million this fiscal year, I believe, uh, and 2 million, I think, total by like this time next year or something like that. So I think they're on pace for that. I think that's a success. Especially considering, you know, that we don't have any more first party uh games announced for the headset and I think that's a fair criticism of the headset too. Although the library of games is very good on PSVR too. At the at even right now as we stand. Uh the other thing about that is I think that the studio making Firewall Ultra first contact entertainment, I think if that goes well, I think Sony acquires them and they become a dedicated VR internal team. Uh, I think that's very much in the cards potentially. But I, and I also think that there's some other studios working on stuff like Fire Sprite. They're probably still they're probably working on another VR game or something like that. The final thing I wanted to point out here, the the really big thing for me, perhaps the biggest thing is that there's this reverse trend if you will, I guess in in revenue share in the gaming market and and Sony's forecasts are predicting that add-on content revenue will become more than double the revenue from full game sales in three years like you pointed out and i think that's all you need to know about why playstation is pushing so far into live service and why they're doing what they're doing and we've talked about on the show before about how much money they make on add-on content already on the playstation store and i think they're just following the money i mean simple as that so something to keep an eye on as we move forward here. Number four, following up on last week's news that PlayStation's second party partner, Deviation Games, suffered massive layoffs recently, nearly 100 people. Industry insider Colin Moriarty revealed on his Sacred Symbols podcast this week that sources told him Deviation's project for PlayStation has, in fact, been canceled. Moriarty also added that the same sources say the developer was given until the end of the year to come up with a viable new project or the company will shut down entirely. Of course, PlayStation does not own Deviation Games, so it is unclear what exactly the ultimatum means. It is likely an internal milestone that they've set for themselves to help get the team back on track on a fresh project. So, sounds like the their game, likely a shooter, is a DOA. All kinds of shit getting canceled. What do you think? We already know they're reviewing stuff this year. They're doing extreme reviews on live services. So it makes sense for them to do the same thing with their parties like we talked about last week, uh, their second party. So, yeah, sure. I'm sure it's a internal goal to have something by the end of the year, a viable project. But I think they know they have a the the clock's ticking. If they don't have something viable soon, they'll lose all their funding. So from PlayStation, at least. So what does that mean? Like, are they going to go find developer? I mean, developers, are they going to go find angel investors or whatever? Like, what are the odds of that? So when a big company drops you, it's kind of hard to just go find. You're not going to find venture capitalists that are super interested in giving you money if PlayStation thought you were dog shit. So, um, you know, they've got, you know, they got six months to figure it out, basically. So hopefully they figure Mm -hmm. it out. I mean, Jesus. Clearly, they've already they cut 100 people for a reason. So it, it's not yeah. looking good. I agree. I think they're uh, in some real trouble. You know, sometimes it doesn't work out. And, uh, it's like that Battlefield meme. Don't worry. It just works out that way sometimes. I don't know. We may never see a game from Deviation, and we may never find out what happened here. PlayStation may never say anything about this. They may just let them kind of just ride off into the sunset. Who knows? All right, Travis, number five, we still, after over an hour into the show, have a bunch of news nuggets here to get through. So we'll do our best here. First nugget, Gran Turismo 7 got another update this week, which added three new cars. The 1967 Alfa Romeo Giulia Sprint GT Velocity, Velocity, Veloc, I don't know. The Greening Audio Company Maverick and the 1990 Nissan GTR Nismo, Nismo, I don't know, R32. 
It's also now possible to perform an engine swap from the maintenance and service menu, and the tuning shop has added an ultimate category. And of course, there are two new scapes so for you to take some beautiful photos. The engine swaps are cool, that's it. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> also, Survival Horror Remake Alone in the Dark announced that it will release October 25th. It's not a remake, it's a reboot, excuse me. It's going to release October 25th for PS5, and a free prologue is available now on the PlayStation Store. It features actors David Harbour and Jodie Comer as the main characters. Sony released the Android version of the Backbone 1 officially licensed mobile phone controller this week for $100. And uh, we're good because nobody's on Android, so. <laughs> also, website Comic Book reported, Travis, that Lionsgate Films chairman Joe Drake casually revealed in an earnings call that a AAA John Wick video game is in development. Can we fucking, let's go. <laughs> let's fucking go. God. Website Game Rant reported that Sony Santa Monica Studio appears to be hiring for a new entry in the God of War series after a new job listing for a senior combat designer requiring, quote, a knowledge of God of War, or yes, a knowledge of God of War, excuse me, and God of War Ragnarok, end quote, appeared online this week. So not a terrible shock, but uh, sounds like we're getting more God of War. Do you know who would be good for that job that has a knowledge of those games? Somebody who yeah. already works there. Yes, like, correct. Just, it sounds like an Jesus internal Christ. job listing, doesn't it? <laughs> also, website Video Games Chronicle reported that Swedish conglomerate Embracer Group saw its stock price fall by over 40% on Wednesday That's good. after it announced that a $2 billion partnership for six years of contracted game development had fallen through. Jesus. Buy now. It's a big one. Yeah, no shit. Because you know they're going to keep big going, one. so just buy now. Mm-hmm. PlayStation Studio Media Molecule has named a successor or creative director following the departure of Mark Healy. Lead designer John Beach is taking over. Publisher Sega or Sega or Sega has laid off 121 employees. So so specific. Can't talk. At developer Relic Entertainment, the team behind a company of heroes. I like that they're like need to lay off 120 people. They're like, what about Tom? <laughs> Fuck Tom. <laughs> yeah, we don't need him. You're right. Good point. Get him out of here. <laughs> also, EA announced that Battlefield in-game currency prices will be going up starting June 1st. Yeah, th this won't surprise you. I I've never bought anything in-game on that game. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I mm, could not care have, less. Have I? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't need... Anyway. The skins I have are from skill-based stuff. Like I don't, I've never been like God. I need to spend X amount of in-game currency to get a fucking thing for my tank, a skin. Like Why? I don't get it. Why not? Don't you want to look cool to get my shit pushed in? Absolutely not. Uh, yeah, I want to look cool and get my shit pushed in. Okay. Also, Chinese publisher NetEase, our favorite, has founded another new studio. This one is called Bad Brain Games. And it's led by former Ubisoft veterans. They're currently developing a story-driven action-adventure game. Oh, there's a punk band called Bad Brains, so hopefully they get sued because they're communist. Oh, perfect. And another de new developer popped up this week called Time to Kill Games, or TTK, TTK Games for, for short. It is led by former Battlefield creative director Lars Gustafsson. Gustav, Gustafsson. 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 And they are working on a next-gen online shooter, imagine that. But which, which, which next-gen? Because we're running into this problem, like I've said, Travis, we're talking about PS5, because that's current gen, and we're at a point now where next gen can literally mean PlayStation 6. It's, so we uh, got to sort this shit out soon. They, they released an article later. It's uh, PC2. Oh, good. Personal Computer 2. Also, Ubisoft is reportedly planning to release its open-world Star Wars game in early 2024, according to sources at website Kotaku. It's being developed by Massive Entertainment, the same studio behind The Division, and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. How do they have time for all this shit? I don't know, but Bungie will probably shut it down. They better get that shit right. <laughs> also, Jeff Keighley stated this week that Summer Game Fest will include three or four, quote-unquote, pretty big announcements on June 8th. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys right now, a lock for that, the finals, is shadow dropping at that, at that I event. I forgot so about I'm, that completely. Yeah, I'm ready for that. Also, EA Sports brand vice president David Jackson said this week that the company has a, quote, huge amount of confidence, end quote, in its first soccer game without the FIFA license. So we'll see. 
The Lord of the Rings Gollum released this week and quickly became 2023's worst reviewed game, currently sitting at a 38 on Metacritic. Terrible. There's something else that just came out that was like the worst reviewed movie of all time. Oh, uh, oh, it was Cleopatra. Oh, gotcha. Also, a second Hot Wheels Unleashed is in development, according to leaks that surfaced this week. Reliable leaker Bill Bill Coon, Bill Bill Coon, claimed the game is called Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. Wow, it's a wow. stretch. With GameStop getting an exclusive turbocharged edition, the game will have three other editions at launch, Standard, Deluxe, and Legendary. Can I get a digital turbocharged version? <laughs> That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Website Push Square reported... That PSVR 2 game, Puzzling Places, is getting multiplayer functionality in the future. Look, we could do puzzles together. Mm. What the fuck? Bungie added PlayStation-themed cosmetics to Destiny 2 this week, featuring items inspired by God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon, and The Last of Us. Actually, pretty cool. Not by factions, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just saying. What's factions? The Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake has been rebooted internally and oh is God. back at the concept stage after switching developers. I hate this so <laughs> fucking much. Up. Just cancel that one. That's the one to yeah. cancel. Who gives a Jesus fuck about Christ. that? I know. It sounds like the Three Doors Down song, so who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that killed me. That was good. Oh. <laughs> Next nugget, Embracer Group CEO Lars Wingefors <laughs> said he had no comment when asked about the status of the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake on a recent earnings call. So that could be DOA as well. I didn't know you could say no comment on an earnings call. Can I do that at work? Yeah, yeah. you should. Well, definitely. Why'd you guys miss? Why'd you guys miss gold? No comment. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, perfect. I guess if you're the CEO, you can. I don't know. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 revealed some fresh new PS5 gameplay this week, and it looks pretty dope. It looks a lot like God of War, actually, or not God of War, Gears of War, <laughs> excuse me. And uh, it looks fun. Looks fun. Website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received updates this week Sniper Elite 5, Forspoken, DayZ, Dreams, The Callisto Protocol, WWE 2K23, Grand Turismo 7, The Last of Us Part 1 on PC, and Woe Long. Fallen Dynasty. So, if you've been waiting for some fixes or new content, you might want to check those out. Next nugget, actor Dolph Lundgren revealed that he is currently filming for a Witcher spinoff show, which is interesting. For real. Battlefield, yeah. Battlefield 2042 Season 5 New Dawn is coming out on June 7th with a new map called Reclaimed, new squad management system, new weapons, gadgets, and quality of life updates, and the much-needed rework of the original Hourglass map is coming later in the season as well. And I can't fucking wait. It's got the 50 caliber Deagle hand cannon in there. It should be fun. Metroidvania open world action adventure post apocalyptic RPG. Yes, it's all of that. Testament, the Order of High Human from developer Fairy Ship Games, was, was announced for PS4 and PS5. Website Gamatsu reported that farming adventure game Everdream Valley will launch for PS4 and PS5 on May 30th. Tetris, the Absolute, the Grandmaster 2 Plus. Will come to PS4 on June 1st. What a name. Side scrolling Metroidvania roguelike game Never Grave, The Witch and the Curse will release on consoles this winter. Pixel art deck building RPG Solvars will launch for PS5 and PS4 on June 27th. Dead Island 2 has now crossed 2 million units sold in its first month on the market. Impressive. Very good success for them. Sci fi action RPG Haruka Beyond the Stars was announced for PS5 and it will release sometime in 2025. That might be the latest, like the like the farthest out game that's been revealed so far. That's crazy. Slice of Life farming game Harvest Moon, The Winds of Anthos, will launch for PS4 and PS5 on September the 26th. Genshin Impact Update 3.7 is available now. Amazon Games announced that free to play online action RPG Blue Protocol has been delayed to 2024 in the West for PS5, and it, but it will launch June 14th in Japan for PC only. It's a, it's a bummer. I was interested in that one. Wrestling game AEW Fight Forever will launch for PS4 and PS5 on June 29th, and apparently it features lots of blood. Like, <laughs> Have you seen some of the screenshots for this no. game? It just looks like a fucking murder scene in the wrestling. Like, you should look it up. It looks like a goddamn serial killer just murdered five people in the, in the middle of the wrestling ring. It's ridiculous. There's no way there's that much blood in wrestling. Like, there's just not. 
Anyway, WRCT, WRTC, what the fuck is that? WRC23 is being developed by Codemasters for PS5, and it's releasing July 28th. It's been leaked. Yeah, they use the the uh, Dirt, the Dirt, the new Dirt gate racing game. They use that engine for that game. So there's no more Dirt. Oh, it's really? now on the WRC. Oh, so they just killed Dirt just like that, uh-huh. huh? Hmm. Final Fantasy 16 will get a PS5 demo prior to launch that will be around two hours long. So that's fun. Rumors popped up this week thanks to newly discovered website domains that Atlas is planning to reveal a new Persona game later in the week. And apparently, a reliable leaker called Nate the Hate claimed that Persona 6 is launching in 2024. It will be a timed exclusive on PlayStation 5. Throwback Arcade Racer Slipstream is getting a native PS5 upgrade and free expansion across all systems to celebrate its fifth anniversary this summer. One of PSVR 2's most popular games, Walkabout Mini Golf, is already getting a new DLC course pack themed around the journey to the center of the earth. It's releasing in the next few weeks, but no release date was given. And no really what did I say? For, yeah, no release date was given. <laughs> and they've also confirmed that it's not a part of any of the DLC packs, so you'll have to pay more money for it. Also, PlayStation Plus members can get a free Atherite in Final Fantasy XIV Online until June the 1st, which means that you can get a free fast travel point in the game world. What are you fucking nerds? Strategy RPG Disgaea 7 Vows of the Virtuous will launch for PS4 and PS5 on October the 3rd in North America, October 6th in Europe, and October 13th in Oceania. Classic JRPG-inspired turn-based RPG Sky Ocean's Wings for Hire was announced for PS5, but no release date was given. Frontier Developments announced real-time strategy game Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin for PS5. The release date was not given, but signups are available now for an upcoming beta test, so it must be pretty close. Sounds dope. Power Wash Simulator is getting more licensed to DLC. This time it's Warhammer 40,000, but we don't have a release date yet. There's fucking Warhammer stuff every week now. <laughs> What's going on with this? Publisher Play On and Grip Combat Racing developer Caged Element announced free to play multiplayer car combat game. Imagine that Warhammer 40,000 Speed Freaks <laughs> for PC, which I know is not PlayStation news, but I want it to come to PS5 because it looks fucking sick. We need it. Also, strategy tower defense game at Bish Bash Bots was announced for PlayStation, or PS4 and PS5, excuse me, and it's launching later this year. Tactical turn-based roguelite Days of Doom was announced for PS4 and PS5 by Atari, of all people, and it's launching later this year. Wolong Fallen Dynasty's Battle of Zhang Yuan DLC launch on June 29th. And finally, Travis, publisher Marvelous announced a number of games at their Marvelous Showcase this week, including third-person mech shooter Damon X Machina, Rune Factory 6, a spinoff for Rune Factory called Project Dragon, two Story of Seasons games, including one with multiplayer, an RPG called Project Life, and another RPG called Project Magia. And that is all for the news this week, and that was something else. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Travis now for this week's new games. Um, on the 23rd, we had After Us, Convergence, A League of Legends Story, Glitch Buster, Stuck on You, Miasma Chronicles, uh, Star Wars Resurgence, Star Trek Resurgence, sorry, uh, Warhammer 40,000, Bolt Gun, there's another one. On the 24th, we had Beat Saber. Yeah. Fight in Tight Spaces. Toronto, Waifu Space. On the 25th, we have Arcade Archives, Rolling Thunder 2. Hello Neighbor, Search and Rescue, Kizuna, AI, Touch the Beat, Knock, Bow and Arrow Soccer on PSVR 2, Photodroid Delta, Railway Empire 2, The Lord of the Rings Gollum, which got really good reviews. The 26th, you have Chronicles of Two Heroes, Amateur Azu's Wrath, Forspoken in Tanta We Trust, Home Sheep Home, Farmageddon Party Edition. Monster mm-hmm. Menu, The Scavenger's Cookbook, and Onigo Hunter. All right. Let's see here. What we got? What we got? Nothing, nothing real big. I mean, the Forspoken DLC is apparently not bad. Miasma Chronicles looks cool, but apparently it's very difficult, pretty standard for 
for that genre. Warhammer 40,000 bolt gun looks pretty cool. It's supposed to be decent. Beat Saber shadow dropping is obviously a big one on PSVR 2. The game for you, Travis, is Fight in Tight Spaces. It is a John Wick style turn based card deck building game where your moves and executions are determined by the cards in your deck. That's pretty cool. It, it looks pretty cool, actually. Yep. Now, let's see what else here. Knock, bow and arrow soccer on PSVR 2. It's like Rocket League with a bow and arrow for, for VR. I bought that. I want to check that out at some point. Looks pretty cool. I'm hearing some good things about it on the Reddit. And yeah, that's it. It's all for the new games this week. And uh, let's start to wrap the show up here, Travis, as we do, by discussing what we've been playing. It's on your plate. Uh, I think the only thing I played this week was Warlander. Yeah? The uh, game's pretty cool. It has a little bit of chivalry in it. It has a little bit of... I don't really know what else it has in it. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But um, yeah. I really like that you, at the beginning, you get assigned like a, a, a task or whatever, you know, go after the core, yeah, very cool. defend the building, and you know you kind of volunteer, and the game puts you in a place, and then the, the commander gives you you know tasks or whatever so i enjoy that a lot but, you know i switch i switch players a lot or characters i mean like i, I know sometimes i, I want to shoot fireballs sometimes i want to run around with a big sword so a lightning bolt. It's, yeah a lightning i have bolt. the lightning bolt thing which is pretty cool that you can like shoot the lightning bolt and hit people on ballistas and stuff like that it's a good time mm-hmm. it's a pretty fun game it's pretty fast paced it doesn't last too long like i don't know it's pretty good for free to play like i don't really have any complaints about it it's an interesting take on games types we've seen before so. Um, yeah. No real complaints, really. I mean, I think the fighting mechanism isn't perfect, but it's enjoyable. It's mm-hmm. pretty. It's fairly intuitive. It's it's not as complex as chivalry, of course. So, a little yeah. more user friendly. Yeah, yeah. um, you can customization isn't bad at all. Um, I've enjoyed that part of it. It's kind of fun. So we set up our characters. It took us like thirty minutes to make our characters. So, you know, it's not bad at all. I mean, it's definitely worth your time. Yeah, I uh, I think Warlander surprised me a little bit. Uh, you know, especially for a free to play game, I think it's good. I think, like you said, it's got some chivalry too in it. It's got some Paragon in it, which is a MOBA. If you've ever played that, uh, a lot of MOBA, which is multiplayer online battle arena tendencies. Um, you know, with like it's got the whole three lane thing, you're trying to get to the other team's castle and destroy their core. But it's you know, for someone like me who like hears MOBA and goes, you know, go, uh, because like I don't want to play, I don't like MOBAs. Definitely, this is like the best ripoff of that that I've played. Uh, like like Travis said, cool abilities. You got the mage; you can shoot lightning bolts and fireballs and ice spears and all kinds of shit. The big guy, the warrior, can like body slam people and do like shield bashes and stuff. So there's like it's really cool. Um, and then like Travis said, you get to pick like a a mission or like a role at the very beginning. Like you get to vote on if you want to protect the castle or like go take towers or go uh, assault the other team's castle. Pretty cool. So free to play. It's on PS4 and PS5. Uh, what else here? I also played some more Poker Stars VR one night, uh, just for a little bit, like an hour or so, played some some poker. And um, yeah, still a really cool game. It ran into some technical issues for the first time. I had some tracking issues where it like, was freaking out on where my hands were at in relation to the table. <laughs> so... I don't know what the fuck was going on with that, but uh, the last thing I played, I haven't really played a whole lot this week, I guess. It's been been weird. Uh, was uh, The last thing I played, though, was Sackboy. I played a little bit more of that. Just like a, I played like a time trial level. That game's awesome, man. I wish I could just play that uh, right now, but I've got some, some review stuff to take care of um, here over the next couple weeks. So anyway, things I'm looking forward to it's hard to say because I totally expected to be, to be playing Hell Divers two right now, mm-hmm. or you know at least a shadow dropped PlayStation game, and a really really weird week for PlayStation. Like this is you, you got to say this is probably not how they imagined their week to turn out. Like people hating the showcase, the Last of Us multiplayer getting delayed, potentially canceled. <laughs> like you know it, turned, it was supposed to be a, a week of happiness, if you will, fun week, and it's turned out to be them getting shit on. But uh, anyway, so. Yeah, the weeks ahead, got some review stuff. And then, of course, we've got Summer Game Fest to look forward to very soon. So, I guess next weekend. So, you know, fuck me. Anyway, that's all for me. It's all for Travis. It's all for the show. We'll get out of here now. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to get a new episode delivered every Monday on your podcast service or YouTube. 
Don't forget to find us on social media as well on Twitter at the DualSense Pod, Instagram, Facebook. Our website is the DualSense Podcast.wordpress.com. And uh, we would love to hear from you. We would love to have you back next week. So thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week. We'll talk at you next time. Bye bye.